Today's topic is about printing out your own photos and why I encourage people to do so rather than just having only the digital copies of them. The digital copies provide great and easy ways to view your own photos from basically anywhere, but I still think there are good reasons why printing your own work can be beneficial to you, no matter how far you are into your photography journey. There are the obvious reasons people always talk about to get you to print your own photos, such as having a physical copy of your photos in case your digital copies get corrupted or lost. But to be honest, I really don't like that reason just because nowadays there are easy ways to back up your data and even have backups to your backup. So that shouldn't really be a concern. For me, the first reason, and probably what I see is the most important reason, viewing your own photos physically is just different from viewing it digitally. Not only do you get to see the great details a photo has even closer in person, it brings me much closer to those moments of actually taking the photo. Being able to see my favorite photos and physically viewing them on paper brings me back to those times even more. For example, I have my photo right here of the LA skyline and the reason why this photo is so important to me and it means so much to me is not only the fact that I actually like the visuals of the photo and just how it looks in general and also the edit but I think this photo means a lot to me uh, due to the backstory of how I got it. So a short story of how I got this story was I was hiking along the uh, Griffith Observatory hike and it was early in the morning I wasn't really feeling it honestly and I was almost close to not going in the first place, but I still went because I wanted to see if I can get any photos of, you know, the clouds and such above the uh, LA skyline that is not focusing. There you go. That I really wanted because I haven't gotten this photo to that date and I really wanted it. So I hiked up and the clouds at first didn't look anything special. So I kind of just snapped a couple pictures and I left like shortly after, maybe 30 minutes or so after. It wasn't really a long hike. But when I got back, I found out that, oh, this photo looked really nice. So I edited it and it turned out like this and I was really happy with it. And that just kind of taught me a lesson of always wait. And even if the conditions don't seem that good or maybe at first they aren't anything special or you think that it's not special, you might be wrong. And I, I, I was really, really wrong about this morning. This morning was super, super fantastic. And this picture always reminds me of that. And with that picture being more of a lesson and a reminder for me, this photo right here actually just reminds me of the funny story uh, behind the scenes of me and my friend hiking throughout this entire place and we had no idea where we were going. And we were pretty lost for a good couple hours, but we finally made it. And this photo was kind of the summary of that story. And it was really fun too as well, even though my feet hurt quite a bit and my back also hurt quite a bit. But this picture always reminds me of that day and that memory won't go away for a long time. This isn't even including the actual moments of me putting together the photo book. This lets me reflect through all my work for the entire year to pick and choose what I consider the best or my favorite photos. This analyzing of your photos lets you reflect on them, allowing you to refine your photography and see what kind of photos you like taking, what edits you prefer for certain types of photos, what compositional skills you like using, and so on. Including that analytical side, deciding which photo goes where to tell the best photographic experience for the book is also where a great amount of fun comes in. For example, I have these two photos right here. The one on the left being from Korea and the one on the right being from Japan. And when I was making this photo book, I was kind of wondering how I can transition from my photo or my time in Korea and then my time in Japan. And these two photos, even though I had no idea that I was gonna take them this way, they just happened to be where the subject were on the left side of the composition of the frame. And I was thinking to myself, oh, that would be a pretty cool transitioning point from going to Korea, my time in Korea to my time in Japan. So I put these from side to side and these are actually two of my favorite photos that I took during the trip. This one being the subject was isolated in this pink moldy grass. I like the kind of color separation right here and then you know the main subject right in the middle. And then with this photo, I liked it just because of the whole vibe. Shrine right here, and then the main subject right here, the girl, she's kind of just looking into the sky and closing her eyes. And it just, I like the vibe, it was nice. And these two photos right here were really perfect for this composition, I feel. And for, I mean, this transition, I feel. Currently editing the video, and I forgot to add, 
you are having trouble finding a place to print your work, I highly recommend Bay Photos. It is very easy to create your photo book as shown in the recording. I am not endorsed or sponsored by them by any means, however I have used their services for my photo books, prints and so on a couple of times, and their service is great. It's a bit pricey initially, however they have a great deal for their photo books. If you add the code STUDIO40, you get 40% off the photo book. This is because the book will have a stamp sample album on the back, but honestly if you just want to see your work printed, it's not really a big deal at all. I've done this with all my photo books and I'll continue to do it with my future ones. Anyways, back to the video. My second reason why I believe you should print your own photos is it acts as somewhat of a deadline. By deadline, let me share an example. One thing I like to do is to print out all my favorite photos from the year in November. It gives me a goal to work towards, and when approaching November, it's as if I'm getting closer to a finish line for the year. This encourages me to get out and shoot more throughout the year so that I have more photos to include in my photo book. Photography is a never-ending journey with constant learning for everyone, pro or not. And for some, I feel that can be a bit discouraging since there's no clear markers to show that you are improving. With this deadline, it gives you a temporal marker for your journey which may help if you start getting lost in your photography journey. This actually leads into my third reason, the ability to compare your photos easily with each other. When making a photo book, you can make it for various reasons, such as having a project to encourage yourself to shoot more, whether that be a family photo book, your pet photo book. For myself, I have only made photo books for what I consider some of my best work for the year, or my favorite work for the year. So because of this, I'm able to look back at my photo books and see what I believe was some of my favorite work for that year and compare it to the most recent year I had. It's always interesting to compare your works and see if you're able to spot anything you would do differently or if you maybe have a new founding of your photo or maybe, you know, you don't. Maybe you still absolutely love your work. Both are fine and perfectly normal. Printing out your photos is a great way to summarize the year for me and get myself ready for another great year of photography. Thinking of all the photos I've taken, it gives me a good reason to go out and try to get more photos to add to my collection. Whatever the reason is, it doesn't matter as long as we go out and shoot more and shoot as much as we can. That's the only way to improve. Instead of watching multiple gear videos talking about the latest tech having 731 megapixels and you absolutely needing it to become a great photographer, spoiler alert, you don't need it and it will not make you a better photographer, try finding ways to encourage yourself to shoot more. Whatever the reason is, just go out there and be creative. Until then, see you next time.